What's up, good people? It's Dustin Coyle again. That's me, coming to you live from Boise, Idaho. The real man cave, the new and improved Grind Den 2.0. Probably like 4.0, honestly. Uh, the last Grind Den wasn't even 1.0. I've had a few in my life. This overarching program is called Intelligent Thoughts. This is an episode of the NBA Today for Tuesday, April 23rd, 2019. We had some issues loading the podcast or uploading the podcast yesterday, so it came out this morning under the uh, title, The Lost Episode, NBA Today, blah, blah, blah. You can check that out. It was a pretty good, uh, a pretty good show, although it's kind of irrelevant now because the two games that I previewed at the end of the show, both happened last night, so we can kind of go back and just watch them rather than listen to me talk about shit. This is going to be a pretty quick little episode. We're going to talk a little bit about Giannis. We're going to talk a little bit about the boy James Harden and Donovan Mitchell. Uh, obviously, just two games last night. And then we got four tonight we're going to break down. Three of them are at a 3-1 point in the series. Could be the last game of these series, one of them a 2-2. We're going to get to that in just a second. Before we start the show, I would like to ask you to go and subscribe, rate, and review to the podcast, wherever podcasts can be found. Uh, iTunes, Podcast Addict, Stinky Stitcher, any one of those things. If there's any problems, let me know. Also, Intelligent Thoughts on Facebook. It's a pretty fucking cool page. I like it quite a bit. Intelligent Tho one on Twitter. That's Intelligent T-H-O. And the number one. And then how about some Instagram shit? Intelligent B Thoughts on Insta. That's the word B, B E. In between Intelligent Thoughts there on Instagram. As I said, this is NBA Today, April 23rd, 2019. Let's start the show. Goddamn good game for half, uh, half of the game or so. Detroit actually leads by six at halftime over the Milwaukee Bucks, but uh, Milwaukee comes out with a 39-point third quarter and a 32-point fourth quarter. Giannis Antetokounmpo scores 41 points, and the Milwaukee Bucks beat the Detroit Pistons 127 to 104 on Monday night, and that completes a four-game sweep of the Pistons. And the Milwaukee Bucks are advancing to the second round of the playoffs in the, for the first time since 2001. Ray Allen, back in the day. Some of that, I believe that was the Ray Allen versus Allen Iverson 76ers. Those are the good old days, honestly, right there. So an 18-year break from winning the playoff series for the Milwaukee Bucks. A huge sweep here. Every game was won by, I think, at least like 13 or 14 points. Let me take a peek real quick at this. Yeah, the smallest margin of victory for Milwaukee in the series was 16 points, and that was Saturday's game. And that was actually the lowest amount of points they scored as well, 119, uh, 120, 121, and 127 respectively for the three other games. To go along with that 41 points, Giannis adds nine rebounds, two for six from downtown, really starting to become a better three-point shooter, and 12 for 23 overall, just 32 minutes of work for him. In this one, a lot of play for everybody. Every uh, Buck, other than uh, Malcolm Brogdon, got playing time at least four minutes. Tony Snell included there. Uh, Terry Frazier included there. Chris Middleton, 18 points, four rebounds, five for 11 shooting. Uh, good, efficient game for him in the victory. And uh, how about some Eric Bledsoe, 16 points, five assists on seven or 10 shooting. How about Sterling Brown, looking like a little Ray John Rondo or something like that. He goes three for seven from the field, misses both of his threes, but finishes with nine points, 
13 rebounds out of the shooting guard position, 6 assists, leads the team in assists, and rebounds. A great game there for Sterling Brown, kind of coming out of nowhere. For the Pistons, Reggie Jackson does have a good game. He goes 5 for 9 from downtown. He finishes with 26 points and 7 assists, but not enough to get the victory. Blake Griffin, 22 points, 6 assists, 5 rebounds. He goes 4 for 6 from 3 land and 8 for 15 overall. Andre Drummond chips in a 7 for 16 shooting night, not his best of all time, but it does net him 15 points and 12 rebounds in the loss. Uh, only real bright spot, maybe like a Luke Kennard, 11 points off the bench. Or a Langston Galloway, 10 points on off the bench. He makes a couple of three-pointers in the game. Uh, as I said, this is the end of the series here. Milwaukee and uh, Detroit. That's going to be a one-versus-four matchup in the second round between Milwaukee and Boston. Boston, obviously, with the sweep just a couple of days ago over Indiana, playing very well, as well as you could possibly hope for. I think that this second round series between Milwaukee and Boston is going to be a fucking doozy. Really looking forward to that. Um, and honestly, I think Boston has a pretty decent shot to win. I know that they're not going to be favored overall in the series, especially as well as Milwaukee has played, um, you know, blowing 16 points is the, the lowest margin of victory in your first round playoff series. That's pretty fucking good. But I think the Boston has a really, really good shot the way that they're playing right now um, of winning that series. Definitely going to be competitive. I mean, there's no way that's a five-game series. I, that's going at least six or seven games in my eyes. But yeah, that'll be a good one. Be looking forward to that. And let me take a peek when that starts. I know it's going to be a few days down the road, honestly, just because of uh, the, the rest of them having to finish off. Here. It's not officially released yet, but it looks like next Monday. So you're looking at a Six-day six day layoff period there for Milwaukee and an eight-day layoff period there for the Boston Celtics. Kudos to both of them, though. I'm sure they would rather be, uh, they would rather have won than to be uh, still playing games either way, whether or not the, they want the rest or not. Better to, better to have won than to have uh, risked the possibility of losing. All right, to the other game of last night in Salt Lake City, this one was a damn good game. Being down After being down three points at the end of the third quarter, Donovan Mitchell scores 19 of his 31 points in the fourth quarter, fourth quarter excuse me, to rally the Utah Jazz to a 107-91 victory over the Houston Rockets in game four of the first round Western Conference series that they are involved in right now. Huge, huge fucking game for Dean Mitch. He didn't shoot well at all. I believe he missed his first 11 shots of the game. Uh, you probably do the math. After three quarters, he had just 12 points. Uh, and the shooting in general, 11 for 26, not his best overall. Obviously, he's been a more of a volume shooter, 9 for 27 the other day. But he does finish with 31 points, 7 rebounds, 4 assists, makes 3 of the 7 three-pointers, um, and has a huge... Huge fourth quarter where he just hit shot after shot after shot. Um, man, and really, really saved the Utah Jazz in this one. They were looking like they were going to lose the game. Uh, really just kind of put him on his uh, on his shoulders and carried them there to the victory. Um, how about Ricky Rubio? 18 points and 11 assists. Pretty good game for him. He shoots just 6 for 17, though, and 1 for 7 from uh, from three lands, so it wasn't the best overall. Um Kind of weird because Joe Ingles and Rudy Gobert both got points each. Uh, Joe, Joe Crow or excuse me, Jay Crowder, honestly, probably the star of the game. Uh, he lit it up real well early in the first half. Kind of kept him close in it. He finishes with uh, 23 points, three for eight from three point land, and eight for 13 overall for Jay Crowder, including some excellent defense. Uh, defense played, especially in the first half. He was really the catalyst of having them have a halftime lead there, getting them the halftime lead there, and just keeping them in the game in the third quarter, honestly, when it looked like Houston was going to blow them out. Rudy Gobert finishes with just four points and nine rebounds. Pretty underwhelming game for him. Joe Ingles, as I talked about, also three points, five rebounds, four assists for him. Derek Favors off of the bench with a 12 and 11 rebound performance. Royce O'Neal, double-double as well, 11 points. 11 rebounds for him. For the 
Houston Rocket. They're led at scoring by Harden, 6 for 12 from downtown, 8 for 19 overall. He finishes with 30 points, just 4 assists in this one. Chris Paul, also 8 for 19 overall, 2 for 8 downtown for him. He finishes with 23 points, 8 rebounds. Eric Gordon chips in, 16 points off 5 for 10 from downtown. P.J. Tucker, 3 for 6 from downtown. He chips in with 13 points. Only one bench player for the Houston Rockets even scores a point. And all of them play. One, two, three, six guys play at least one minute. Um, <clears throat> the only one who happened to score was Austin Rivers. In 20 minutes, he shoots two for six and finishes with five points and three rebounds. Daniel House, 28 minutes. That was 0 for 6, 0 points, and 5 rebounds in the loss. Most of that coming in the fourth quarter. Um, as I said here, the Utah Jazz kind of save off elimination. I mean, that was game four. They were down. Um, probably their last game in Salt Lake City. They live to fight another day. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the world. Of course, you're going to have to go back to Houston, where you have not played well. You know, that's where Houston won the first two games by 20-plus points. Um, but that's, that's the key. Uh, you, you know, James Harden played pretty well in Game 4, but you kind of held him some struggles in Game 3 and Game 2. Or Game, game 3 and Game 2. Um, sort of a bleak future here, I would say, for the Utah Jazz, but at least it is a future. It could be a lot, a lot worse if you're an Indiana Pacer fan or a Detroit Pistons fan or something along those lines. Um, they, they still have a shot at winning it. They're still the five seed. Um, still the toughest higher seed in the NBA playoffs, regardless of the conference. Still have Donovan Mitchell, who seems to be uh, kind of picking up where he left off in last year's playoffs, where he led them to the victory over the Clippers in the first round. Um, you got to get more out of Gobert. you probably got to get more out of Joe Ingles. Jay Crowder played great at defensive intensity. Donovan Mitchell actually said that Jay Crowder is the leader of the team post-game in that one. He actually shouted out Jay Crowder while they were giving him the interview. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's going to take everything you have if you're a Jazz, uh, Jazz fan, Jazz player, anybody affiliated with the team. It's going to take absolutely everything you have to win this series, Pro you know, probably even to win one more game here. I, you know, that, that game five in Houston, I'm sure it's going to be nuts. They're not going to want to have to go to a game seven back in Houston, or definitely a game six in uh, in Salt Lake City again. Either way, if you're a Jazz fan, you got to be happy. That game five is going to be in Houston on Wednesday night. We'll talk about that tomorrow. All right, so that's the end of the games from last night, just two of them. We do have four of them today. We'll give a little quick rundown of right here. The first one, 5 p.m., NBA TV, Kawhi Leonard and the Toronto Raptors host Nikola Vucevic, Aaron Gordon, and the Orlando Magic. Toronto has won three straight games in the series. They're up three games to one. And I'm reading here the Toronto Raptors are going to attempt to win four straight games in the same playoff series for the first time in franchise history. Never been done before. No sweeps in their history. Wasn't one here, but they did lose the first game. Won the last three. Um... <clears throat> Excuse me. Chris Boucher is going to be out, it looks like, probably for the Toronto Raptors. The Orlando Magic are going to have their full roster available here. Toronto is going to be favored by 12 at home. ESPN BPI gives them an 82% chance to win the game, and I agree. Honestly, I agree. 100% there with that pick. Uh, I'm actually going to do some gambling on this one. I'll and that would be one of them. I'm going to do a money line Toronto parlay with a couple of the games from tonight. I think it's a good idea. Toronto probably wins big in this one. All righty, to the second game of tonight. This is going to be the first one of a TNT doubleheader after the fight on Saturday. This is going to be a fun one to watch. I will be enjoying it. Joel MB looks like he is going to play. Like I said the other day, I would sit him, but it looks like he's going to play in this one. The Philadelphia 76ers are going to host the Brooklyn Nets. Game 5 of their first round series. Philadelphia leads three games to one. Been a hard-fought series, all series. Um, I guess the last game was really the only one that wasn't that close. That was the game where we had the Jared Dudley, Joel in.